Going to be looking at the Sony SLT A99 today. Going to start off just quickly by having a quick refresh on the specs and some of the features with this camera. This was released in 2012 and it was Sony's flagship A mount camera at the time. What I'm going to do is start off with a physical tour of the body and get into a bit more detail later on. On the top plate, left hand side, we have a locking mode dial that also has three memory positions that you can store. On the right hand side, we have the control layout. Reminds me a bit of Canon actually with the drive, white balance and ISO button. The body on this is mostly mag alloy, but that front part with the Sony logo, that panel is plastic. Here's the SLT mirror, which is fixed in position. You can flip that up to clean it. The penalty you pay for that mirror is around about half a stop of light is lost from the sensor. By the hand grip, we have the autofocus assist light. It's the red beam type, very useful. And there is a depth of field preview button below that. Here's the silent multi-controller, which has a button in the middle. And there's a custom button just above the lens release. There's no built-in flash on this camera. You'll notice that most of the controls are on the right-hand side, clustered around the joystick. You can get used to it. The ergonomics are quite good on this camera. Here's your multi-interface hot shoe. I did a video on that, so do have a look at that if you're interested. Dual card slots on this UHS-1 with the SD. For some reason, we still have a memory stick compatibility. Nice quality covers on this camera. They are hinged and they do snap back into place quite firmly. They don't open by accident. And on screen you'll see all of the connections, which is exactly what you would expect for a camera of this class. On the bottom you'll see there's quite a large rubber pad. And here's the battery compartment. No weather sealing around that for some reason. And here's connecting the vertical grip. You just flip open that cover. You don't need to pull that off, you can just leave it open. The top plate is metal, but it's mostly plastic. Quite nicely made, it does have a bit of sealing there on the door. The main advantage with this grip is that you can keep one battery in the camera and you can have two additional ones in the vertical grip. So that will allow you to extend your battery life quite significantly. And that's pretty useful because battery life can be an issue on this camera. And once I've screwed that in place, you'll see you've got a lot of controls on this vertical grip. It's the complete opposite of what Sony do now with their mirrorless cameras for some reason. It's not a small grip though, it is on the bulky side, so do bear that in mind. The menus on this camera, they're not too bad. This was before Sony started getting into sort of 20 or 30 pages on each of the tabs. We have Quick Nav, where you can sort of cycle through the settings quickly on the back panel. Another neat feature is the focus limiter. If you're using a D-type lens, that will also bring up the distance. Perhaps one of the best design features of the camera is the on-axis, in other words, in line with the viewfinder, fully articulated LCD. You can also rotate it down and to the side. It's one of the best designed LCDs that I've used. It's very strange Sony didn't use this design with some of their mirrorless cameras. With the multi-controller, you can customize that for different settings that you want quick access to. What I'm going to do now is show you some sample images and talk about some specific areas with the camera. Give you some examples now with the dynamic range. The camera is still, at least at the lower ISO levels, very competitive with modern cameras. You'd definitely be able to do maybe three or four stop shadow pulling without any obvious penalty with noise. And Sony also improved the JPEG output quite significantly. So I tended to put the camera on JPEG noise reduction low. I found that to be a good setting where it suppressed the color noise without removing too much with the noise reduction on the luminance noise. Never had any hesitation using JPEGs with this camera. We look at some higher ISO now. An example of the steady shot, you can see 50th of a second at 210 millimeters. Very useful feature. At 6400, it's pretty good. Wouldn't have any problems using it at that ISO level. 
Once we start to go above that though, 12,800, that's where things get a bit tricky. And honestly, I wouldn't really go to that level unless I absolutely had to. I'm going to talk briefly about the autofocus system on this camera. It isn't exactly the same as the A77, even though on paper it looks the same. We still have the 19 point system, but the performance real world, particularly for tracking, is definitely better than the A77 was. That's in my experience having owned both cameras. But it has to be said, it was very strange that Sony would limit that number of focus points on a full frame camera because they're basically all clustered in the middle. There was a bit of hype and buzz with the dual AF system, 102 points AF points on the sensor. I have used it. Personally, I didn't find it that useful. And that's partly because it just didn't support that many lenses. And I found it more effective for things like portrait shooting. It just didn't increase the coverage to the side very much at all. It just put more points top and bottom, which isn't really what I was looking for. I'm not a big video user, but I did put a couple of notes on screen for you just to give you an idea of my thoughts. It's pretty good up to around ISO 3200. Not the most detailed footage, but certainly quite usable. I'm going to cover a few points now about the evaluative metering on this camera. My own thoughts, having used it quite extensively, are that it typically tends to be a bit on the cautious side, maybe around about half to two thirds of a stop under. One point to note in the evaluative metering is that it's not based off the autofocus point, so it won't adjust the exposure based on where your focus is. Most cameras do, and there isn't a setting for that in there, but what you can do is turn on the face detect, and I found that that works quite well in terms of getting a better exposure. If it sees the face, sometimes from a far away distance it doesn't, I find the shutter to be pretty quiet on this camera. Uh, buffers about average 17 to 18 shots in RAW. One thing with the EVF, it's a lot better than the A77. It is still a bit noisy in low light, but not nearly as much. But there is a bit of lag, and you will notice that if you're shooting action shots. Even outside in good light, particularly with the six frames a second, you tend to see a slideshow of the images that you shot. So I would normally set the camera to around about three frames a second. That split second delay can sometimes make a difference with the images that you take. You'll notice with the lenses that I'm using, the 100 to 200, I use that quite a lot. 80 to 200, the Minolta, another excellent lens. And for many people, I think the attraction with A-mount was the collection of Minolta lenses. Some of them are very good and you could pick them up for very reasonable prices. Couple that with the stabilization in camera that could give you quite a cost effective setup for not a particularly big outlay. I think the mistake Sony made was not making a single card slot plastic body full frame camera, a more affordable budget offering. Some people and myself included found the price on this to be a bit too high to be honest. Over time, I got used to the limited focus points. It's not necessarily a problem for all types of shooting, but it is something which is a little bit puzzling, really, considering it was a flagship camera. I think maybe people were expecting that they would have increased that coverage. Let's talk about some potential problems to look for with this camera. Every A99 that I've picked up, the eyepiece cup is ripped or broken. So do look out for that. The rubber can come off in the corner near the door cover. I've seen it actually snap off on some cameras. I actually glued this one back in place. The rubber tends to expand and it sort of catches. The first body that I got had stiff control dials. You can get around that by spraying a bit of silicone in there. Don't put too much in. That is quite a common fault. And the other one is the standard camera error. My first camera, that did cause problems. That's usually related to the shutter mechanism. The delay turning on the camera is probably the most annoying part of it. It seems to be a couple of seconds. 
a lot of reviewers made a big deal about the lag with the aperture and shutter speed when you turn the dial there's a bit of a delay I didn't find it a big issue I think it was a bit overblown it's a fair point to make but it didn't really get in the way of anything real world shooting a lot of things to like with this camera I always enjoyed shooting with it definitely a few areas to look out for and potential drawbacks battery life with EVF cameras isn't particularly good what I would suggest is that you just get more aggressive with the power saving settings. If you have any questions or any thoughts, do drop a comment below. Be interested to hear what you think. Don't forget to stick around. I have more videos coming up very soon.